Let us now apply all the ideas that we have discussed before to an example that involves a car and a train. In this example, the, we're going to have two different kinds of motion. Together, the car is going to move with uniformly accelerated motion, and the train is going to uh, move with constant velocity. So initially, the car has a velocity of 18 meters per second to the right, and we have a train that actually is moving faster than the car and at the moment when the train is passing the car with a speed of 32 meters per second the driver of the car starts to accelerate not wanting to be left behind by the train he puts the pedal to the metal and starts accelerating with 2 meters per second square so uh, the motion of the car is uniformly accelerated motion and the motion of the train as we said is constant velocity. The train remains moving with the same velocity at all times. So the first question that I want to discuss is how much time does it pass until the car catches up with the front of the locomotive? When solving physics problems uh, it is important to be organized to approach the problem in a systematic way, uh, writing down all the information that you have, trying to have a clear mental picture of what the situation is. So the way I'm going to solve this problem is to uh, uh, show you explicitly what kind of steps you should be following, at least for a beginner, what kind of steps uh, you should follow to uh, solve a problem, any physics problem, in such a clear and organized way that could increase the chances of arriving at the correct solution. So as I said, these steps apply for any kind of problem that you have in physics. The first one is sketch. Sketch the situation. For a kinematics problem, it is, uh, the sketch is a little bit more involved than in other problems. And I would suggest to always do a position versus time and a velocity versus time plots. In other kinds of physics problems, in Newtonian mechanics and so on, the sketch will be something less elaborate. It will be to do a pictorial representation of the situation. Here we're going to go a little beyond that and put a lot of information into the sketch of position versus time. The first piece of information that we want to put in is the position, the plot of position versus time for the locomotive. We know that the locomotive is moving with constant velocity. So the position versus time plot should look like a straight line with a definite slope. And if we plot the velocity as a function of time for that locomotive, then it will be just a horizontal line. Next step is to draw the position versus time for the car. The position versus time plot for the car is going to have some features. First of all, it's not going to have a constant velocity because we know that the car is accelerating. So we're going to call t equals zero the moment when the car and the locomotive are, uh, are even. So this is time t equals zero and this is position equals zero. So that is the origin of the coordinates. At that instant of time, the uh, car has a velocity that is less than the velocity of the locomotive. That means that the slope, the initial slope of the red curve is lower than the slope of the blue line which represents the position of the locomotive and that slope is going to increase because the car is accelerating and until the catch-up time, the time when the position of the car is equal to the position of the locomotive at that point you would expect the velocity of the car to be higher than the velocity of the locomotive let's call that time TCU for catch-up and in the plot of velocity versus time we will have the velocity of the car growing linearly because it's constant acceleration motion starting with some initial velocity of the car and going to some final velocity at catch-up time notice that the velocity of the car at catch-up time is going to be higher than the velocity of the locomotive it must be so since the car is going to have to move for a certain amount of time at a velocity higher than the velocity of the locomotive simply because the car has started with a velocity that is lower and there is a distance now between the locomotive and the car and that distance needs to be taken back 
The second step in solving this problem, in general any problem, will be to categorize the problem. That means to find out what kind of concepts, chapters in the book, chapters covered in the lectures and concepts are involved in the solution of the problem. To find out what the problem is about. The problem that we're working on right now is a kinematics problem, clearly, and because it has an object, the locomotive, moving with constant velocity, and we have a car moving with constant acceleration, we have two kinds of motion, uniform motion and uniformly accelerated motion. Once you have categorized the problem and you know what kind of problem it is, then it's a good idea to make a list of the variables to list all the information that is being given in the problem. So what we've been given in this problem are that the car has an initial velocity of 80 meters per second and an acceleration of 2 meters per second square and that the locomotive has a constant velocity of 32 meters per second which means the acceleration of the locomotive is zero. Fourth step is to write the equations and the concepts or tools that you have at your disposal to solve the problem. Since you have already categorized the problem as a kinematics problem, you should, you should uh, have, in, have handy the four kinematics equations that you can potentially use to solve the problem. And But not only that, but also the uh, concepts that have been discussed. For example, the velocity and acceleration as being the slope of the position and velocity respectively and the position and velocity as being areas the position as being the area under the velocity curve and the velocity change in velocity being the area under the acceleration plot these are also tools that should not that you should not neglect most people dealing with this problem will be will immediately start throwing kinematics equations at the problem and this is this is an okay approach. This the problem obviously can be solved using those equations, but um, the way I'm going to solve it right now is a way in which we're not going to use equations. What we're going to use is these concepts discussed about velocity and acceleration, slopes and areas, which is a, an approach that a lot of people will not be familiar with. The fifth step in solving the problem is to write down the solution. As I said, we're going to look for the solution using uh, the plots and the concepts of slope and area. So we're looking for the catch-up time. Think about the area under the velocity versus time plot. The area under the velocity of the car plot, which is the area dashed in red, and the area of the locomotive, which is the area dashed with blue. When you look at those areas, the first question that you should think about is how do those areas compare? Is one area bigger than the other one? Should they be the same? Think about that. The answer to this question is that the area should be equal. And they should be equal because the car and the locomotive have a common position at t equals zero and they have a common position at the catch-up time. That means that they have moved through a distance of, uh, in the case of the car, delta xc, in the case of the locomotive, delta xl, and those distances are obviously the same. Since we know that the position is the area under velocity versus time plot, then the area marked with red lines should be equal to the area marked with the blue lines. What that means is that the triangles that I'm dashing here with a yellow color should have equal areas. The angle at the vertices of those triangles is the same, which means that for those areas to be the same, the height of the triangles should be exactly the same. Now the height of the left triangle, as you can tell, is 32 meters per second minus 18 meters per second. So its height is 14 meters per second. So that means the height of the triangle on the right should be also 14 meters per second. That gives you a total increase in velocity for the car of 14 plus 14 meters per second. That is 28 meters per second. At catch-up time, the velocity of the car should be 28 meters per second faster than 
the initial velocity of the car. So now the, the question of the how much is the catch-up time turns into the question of how much time does it take the car to increase its velocity by 28 meters per second. We do know that the acceleration of the car is 2 meters per second squared. So the solution is quite simple. Since the slope of the straight red line is 2 meters per second squared and the rise is 28 and the run is t catch up time, then t catch up time should be equal to 28 meters per second divided by 2 meters per second squared, which gives you 14 seconds. Knowing this, I would like you to answer the question of what is the final velocity of the car at the moment when it just caught up with the train. Think about this question, pause the video, and then uh, go to all space and answer the question in the video quiz. And the last question is what is the maximum distance between the car and the train before the car has caught up with the train? To answer this question, pause the video and go to our space to answer the question there. As a hint, please note that this distance only starts to decrease when the velocity of the car is bigger or equal than the velocity of the train.